हाँ अभी मैंने किए नहीं है पर कर दूंगी एक बार ये हो जाए ना हाँ ठीक है हाँ ठीक है है अच्छा मैंने कुछ नहीं बोला सर मतलब क्योंकि कॉल चल रही थी ना इसलिए ज्यादा बात नहीं हुई उसने बस ये सेड सीन का बोला सर बाय आ गए हेलो 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 कैन यू हियर मी वेरी मार्जिनलाइज्ड एंड वनरेबल देन इफ यू पुट देम इन स्कूल कीपिंग देम इन स्कूल इज आल्सो अ चैलेंज व्हिच इज समथिंग वी आल्सो सो रिटेंशन इज म्यूजिक इज अ की इज अ की पार्ट ऑफ आवर वर्क आल्सो सो या Congratulate you. Uh, we'll try to keep it really short, so mm-hmm. you can. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll uh, I'll, my I have a short presentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys a, a few slides describing describing the foundation, and then just tell you guys some of the challenges that our partners face uh, globally when they're trying to. Uh, enroll children and retain them in in primary education so mm-hmm. we'll make it we'll make this interactive i know it's the end of the day for you guys so everybody's trying to get out of the office uh, as as quickly as possible right right <laughs> so i think uh, you already have some eid holidays in place yeah yes it, it to be honest with you uh, we've been out since last thursday so it's been over 9 days now okay so we've been out we've been on a, on an on an eid holiday for 9 days we go back to uh work next week okay yeah we go back to work next week yeah so it's a nice nice, nice little break unfortunately we cannot travel out of the mm. country yet because of mm. because of the pandemic Um, oh, yes but it's it's nice to get a little break oh, great great so uh, you, you know uh, i i know a little i've read a little about the kind of work you do but it yeah. is really nice to hear from you but, but i think you said that you already have a presentation to share i do i do and I, i'm trying to figure out let's see i guess i can do a screen uh share yeah just just see if you can just share the screen or let me okay. try because uh, i'm trying to give you the rights of that also otherwise i'll make you the fantastic open. fantastic okay uh yeah. just give me one second no problem take your time yeah
how we go about doing our work and then i will focus a little bit on the barriers the types of barriers that children face that the ones mm -hmm. that see uh, occurring again and again in multiple multiple places and that's basically it that's all i have so it's pretty common common stuff so nothing really um exciting so if you if you want me to stop at any point Oh, that will that's really nice is it, how do you say i missed a part because i think there is some uh, uh, concern uh, you know on the I think there's some problem with the internet and I missed a part of it. Uh, can you just repeat yes. please? No, I was just, I was just asking how you, you, you pronounce your name. Preeti. Preeti. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's the way it's spelled. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's very simple. Very simple. Exactly. Exactly. Simple to understand and simple to pronounce. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. Yeah. Uh, perfect, perfect. So they, they, people will be joining us at eight. Uh, so people, they've, they've already started joining in. Five minutes or, okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay. I'll go ahead and close my door. Hello, Ashkar. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Kaise hain? Kaise hain, ma'am? Bilkul thik. Aap kaise hain? Kaise hain? Acha hoon, ma'am. Aap batayega aap kaise? Ma'am, ekdam acha hoon, ma'am. Okay. Field mein jaayi raha tha. Rasti mein ruka hoon. Meeting ke liye. Okay, great. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you. So, Mr. Said, we are already in the past few minutes. So, if you want to join us, then we can uh, start. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Invite me and share some of my thoughts with you and your team. Uh, we've, I've been talking to you know, two of your colleagues already, beautiful people. And I, I, and I one of India is on my uh, top list uh, country to visit and I have, I've never been there before. So I, 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 I will definitely make sure to, to do so. For those of you who are just joining us, uh, my name is Saeed Yassin and, uh, and I work for a, a foundation uh, based in Doha, Qatar, uh, and in the foundation, I, I, I work for a program called Educate a Child. That's where Shubhangi and I used to uh, be colleagues and worked uh, uh, together. Um, what I think I will do today is just to give you a little bit of a context 
um, before I delved into the question um, questions that Trubangi gave me to, to address, I would like to give you a little bit of background about the foundation and, and, and the program, things that we do and, and how we go about doing our work. And, and then I will spend a few minutes uh, on talking about the, the difficulties and the barriers that children that we serve face. Yeah. So uh, with that, I would like to just, I have put together a few slides. I will go through the slides fairly quickly. They're very basic <clears throat> introduction uh, slides. So I'll go through uh, quickly. So as I said, uh, the, the, the foundation I work for is called Education Above All. And the program in the foundation that I work for is called Educate a Child. Um, the, uh, the, the foundation was founded and, and started by uh, Sheikh Hamosa bin Nasser, who is the Amir's wife. Amir here is the, is the head of this state. Uh, sorry, not wife, but the mother, the mother, the mother of Amir started the foundation in 2012 because she was concerned about the fact that there were too many children uh, out of, that, were, that are out of school at the primary level. Uh, you know, in, back in 2012, when she heard that there were 64 million children that, are, that do not have access to education at the primary level, she decided that she was going to do something about it. And therefore she set up this foundation. Uh, so essentially her foundation was to provide opportunities to poor and marginalized, marginalized children globally. Um, so she set up this foundation to do this. And, and the idea was that you know, we would not be able to do it alone but we will be able to do this with partners or through partners and, 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 and to make sure that kids have access to education, that education is pr protected once, once uh, schools are built and, and that we are advocates for, for uh, access. So essentially her goal was to create a movement, if you will, trigger a movement globally that supports uh, young children who have no access to education. Sir, hello. Yes, go ahead. Sir, thoda vision jo hai, usko thoda bada karke, wo dikh nahi pa raha hai skin pe, aur press kar rahe hain to cannot support likh raha hai. Is it better? Usko bada kare. Rahul, abhi better hai kya? Nahi, isse pahle wala slide, ma'am. Nahi nahi, ab better hai kya vision? Nahi, abhi wo slide aage bada diye hain, isse pahle wala. Said, can I request you to go, just go back to, to the slide because, uh, you know, people couldn't read it. So they want yes. to just have a look once again. Ye wala no problem. Na, yes. Vision? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. So, so this, this program slide basically talks about two things. It talks about the vision that of the foundation, the vision that Her Highness, our founder, if you will, had for the foundation. So her vision was to bring new life chances and real hope and opportunities to poor and marginalized youth and children globally, particularly in the, le in the, in the developing world, in, the, in, uh, in countries that are less developed globally and so that is essentially her mission and then she what her her strategy was to be an enabler if you will enabling countries to to, to deal with this issue of out of school children as i said in 2012 when she when her highness put together this foundation there were 64 million children 
globally. So what she said basically is that out of the 64 million, Qatar and this foundation would put 10 million of those children in school. So, and then the rest would, 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 would be handled by the rest of the world. Is, uh, can I go to the next? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Okay. Perfect. And, if, and, and these, I'll, I could send these uh, slides if you want, so you can all get the slides uh, at the end of the, the presentation. Uh, so the foundation, the, the, uh, the foundation has four programs. Uh, one, the, the program that I work for is called EAC, Educate a Child. And Educate a Child program deals with creating access for out of school children at the primary level. Then there is a, a program called al Fahura, which gives scholarships to universities, but, but it's kind of limited to a few countries. So al Fahura deals with higher education, if you will, youth and higher education. So does ROTA. Some of you might have heard ROTA. ROTA stands for Reach Out to Asia. And ROTA works primarily with youth, creating life skills, opportunities, training for youth. And then the last program in the foundation is a program called Peace. And Peace deals with the issue of protecting education in a times of conflict. A lot of you know that when there are, when if there's a conflict of there's a war, schools, schools are destroyed. Kids, the peace is to be an advocate for schools so that the schools are safe for children and at times of conflict. So basically, here I'm trying to show you that there are these four programs in the foundation, and I'm going to focus on educate a child, the first, the first box on to the left. And that's the program that I will be talking about, and that's the program I know most about. And 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 I work for. And as I said, Educated Child works primarily with out of school children at the primary, at the primary level. So as I, as I mentioned quickly, the, the program was launched in 2012 by Sheikh Hamosa with the vision of creating uh, opportunities for out of school children and, and, and to trigger a, a movement that supports the, the rights of, of children to have access to primary education. So I, this is so somewhat a repeat of the last, of the last uh, slide. Um, what, what the, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how, what we do and how we work. One of the things that are really, really important to her highness is that when we work in a country, we, that we work with the government. And the way we work with the government is that we say what the government national priorities and policies and priorities. So if, for example, we give resources to a, 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 a a project, say your organization, for example, one of the things that we ask is that we want you to tell us how you are going to contribute to the national education plans and priorities and policies. Very, very, very important piece for us. The other thing that we try to do is, is, uh, is, is to, to to, to contribute to the SDG4. So Her Highness is an, is, a, is, a, is an advocate for the SDG4. So if we come to you and say, okay, we're going to give you some resources to work in India, we're going to ask you and say, how are you going to contribute to the SDG4 goals? What, is the, what are your strategies and how is this going to fit into that? 
So what Chef Mosa does on an annual basis is bring to bring together global leaders, uh, world, you know, whether they are UN or or, or presidents or and or, you know, other foundations, and say how do we go about contributing to the SDG four? How do we support national governments in achieving their 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 goals? What are the gaps in in funding and resources? Um, if you quickly, could please tell us a little more about SDG four, it will be nice. Okay, uh, maybe I'll do that at, at towards the end. So let me go through Great. this quickly. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I, I realized that my I'm only slide seven, and I have seventeen of them already. Um, so the way our approach our approach is that we believe that every child has a right. So we are a rights-based organization, and we target every place we work. We target the most marginalized, the most disadvantaged, and the hardest to reach. And as I said earlier, our focus, educate a child's focus, is is the primary level at the primary level. You know, we we know how important it is to to educate younger children. Uh, and and uh, you know it's very important to work at the, uh, uh, at the secondary level, but we have to we are focusing at the primary level. So so that that is where we, we we focus on and put our resources in. The other thing that we look for when we work with partners is scale and sustainability. And by scale, I mean we we try. To, to reach as many kids as possible in a, in a given country. So when a partner comes to us and says, I'm going to work in a particular country, in a particular context, we say, okay, how many children are you going to ac create access for? How many kids you will benefit from your program? And it, we then create a, a minimum and say, would you be able to put 10,000 kids in school every year, for example. Um, and then the other question we, we ask is that if the project is say for four or five years, how, how, are the, how is the impact that you, you make going to be sustained in the long run? And sustainability can be defined many ways, but the inf our emphasis is that you know, we cannot work in a country for the rest of our, of our lives. So at some point, a project could be a three-year project, it could be a five-year project, but there is a way. So once we end funding a partner or a project, how is the project going to be sustained? And then the other important thing uh, to us is, is in, you know, we do not subscribe, we do not uh, tell partners what to do. We do not tell our employee partners A, B, C, D, in country. Every context is different. So we expect the partner to identify what the issues are and, and then come up with uh, interventions that are appropriate. And that's when we talk about diversity of approach. Uh, we work with uh, some of our partners. We work, work with formal schools. Some are work with non-formal schools, and so on. And I said, and I said, as I said earlier, we try and uh, uh, align our work with the DG in the past, but now the you know sustainable development goal number, four, which is creating quality primary education globally. Um, so here is a little bit of repeat, repeat but uh, just to, to, to highlight a few things. Um, we believe in, in, in building structures and infrastructure. So for example, we work in a country, we look for partners. We usually say we are we are a funder. We usually 
So if we were in India, for example, or in Indonesia, or whatever we were, if in the Philippines, for example, we find partners who are already on the ground doing similar work so that we, so that we could scale up the work that they're doing that, uh, so that we can ensure that there are resources available, which we call co-funding. So, uh, so if we say a project in 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 a, in a, in a region in India is, uh, is 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 working with girls and bringing um, bringing them to school, we say, okay, if we gave you know if we provided some resources, would you be able to enroll additional kids? How much is it going to take? What strategies are you going to use? And can you find some co-funding? And co-funding can be anything. It could be uh, if you have an existing project, uh, working with girls, provide, you know, building schools, providing materials, or, or providing them uh, uniforms, or paying for school fees. We count that as co-funding. But co-funding is critical critical to us. So partnerships are important. Taking up existing activities and models is key, you know, funding the, the co-funds necessary for the project is key to us. And as I said earlier, we, uh, we, our goal is not to create a parallel processes. We're here to support the government achieve its goal and that with that, we try to align every project and every activity that we're involved in with the government's priorities and goals. Um, uh, we, when we talk about partnerships, we have different types of partnerships. We have what we call strategic partners and Strategic partners are organizations that have similar mission and vision like us. So uh, UNICEF, for example, some of the UN agencies could be uh, a strategic partner. We are trying to do similar things globally. We have what we call implementing partners. And implementing partners are organizations, as I said earlier, that we provide resources to who implement activities on our behalf. Um, and I should say that we as a foundation have no offices in other countries. We do not implement activities ourselves or projects ourselves. It is our implementing partners that, that um, implement on our behalf and the and those could be UN agencies we, you know UNICEF is a big big partner um, it's both a strategic partner but it's also an implementing partner UNHCR and other UN agencies but also NGOs international NGOs save the children care and all the usual suspects but also we work with local local organizations that implement on our behalf. We also have what we call advocacy partners, partners who, uh, who are willing to, 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 make, to, to make the, uh, the, uh, the uh, our mission goals of our foundation known globally. Organizations that are willing to advocate for out of school children globally. It could be an airline, for example, if you ever take Qatar Airways, they play a small video that talks about the foundation, um, the, the educated program. So that is a, a type of advocacy we want to do advocacy on our behalf. And then the final uh, partner, type of partner that we have is what we call resource partners. And resource partners are, part, uh, are organizations, other foundations that, that we come together to support a project. So for example, the World Bank is, an, is, a, is, a, is a resource partner. 
So, in, for example, a research, uh, a research partner would bring in uh, some uh, money and we will, we will bring additional money and to put towards a project. Um, in India, Bharti is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a partner, a resource partner that we have to fund some uh, work uh, globally. So those are the types of partnerships we have, strategic, implementing, advocacy, and resource partners. This is just uh, uh, some of our partners globally. Uh, I think this is a bit old. I've, I've noticed that there are a few missing, but these are some of the partners that we have, both uh, implementing and advocacy uh, partners and resource partners. Um, and I will send this to you. You don't have to look through it. Uh, this is, it looks a bit messy, but it, I, this is going to be available for you to look at later on. And you can also find this on our website if you want. Now, uh, Dr. Shubangi asked me to, to, to sort of concentrate on issues relating to um, the, the types of problems and, and, and barriers that we see uh, come up in the countries that we work in. For example, you know, why are children not going to school in a particular country? What are the problems? We, we, we call those barriers. We say, it's a, there's a reason why a child in a particular context, in a particular community, is not going to school. What is the barrier? And, and I, we, we were, I was talking to one of your colleagues earlier, and I noticed that you also, your approach is also uh, to, to attack the barriers, the, the sort of the underlying problems of uh, the, the issue of out of school children. So some of the problems that, that uh, we see again and again and again in multiple places are, for example, poverty. Poverty is, is a huge, huge barrier in many, many of the poor communities that we work, we work in. And that can be, you know, we could look at poverty and find different types of poverty. But generally, you know, it's a family that doesn't have the resources needed to send a, a, a boy or a girl to a primary, primary school. We, you know, the issue girls in particular face, you know, uh, 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 difficulties. So the, the, just the idea of being a girl in itself it becomes a barrier. We see that across, across the board. We have, in, in some places, there are what we call challenging geographies. For example, in, in places uh, like Bangladesh, you know, there are flood, there's a lot, a lot of flooding and the kids sometimes are unable to go to school <coughs> excuse me, because of the floods. Um, you know, countries that are usually in conflict and at war uh, is, is face, children who live in this context face difficulty in going to school. So conflict in itself, it becomes a barrier to education or accessing education, if you will. Once there's a, a, a war, a conflict in a context, you know, children run away, they become uh, refugees, they become internally displaced, and so on. And that in itself then becomes a barrier because now all of a sudden you are, you know, a child is poor, she's a girl, but she's also a refugee and she has no way of accessing school. Uh, uh, also resources is, is, a, is a big barrier. A lot of the schools that we work in, the communities that we work, uh, schools don't have the resources needed to go to, to, to provide quality education. So we, 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 you know, we address that. Uh, quality of, the quality of education also becomes a barrier, for example, Teachers who are not trained uh, become a barrier. A lot of children just get discouraged because the teacher isn't teaching well and education becomes uh, not interesting and so on. So we see that in many places that the quality of education itself 
becomes, becomes a barrier. And then there are the issue of infrastructure. Um, and you know, they're, they're in a lot of the places, a lot of the communities that we work, there are no schools, you know, so kids are, have, to, have to walk, you know, an hour, two, three hours to go find a school. And we're talking about very, very small kids, you know, little kids, you know, of eight, nine, 10, you know, walking two hours a day to go <clears throat> to school. So that in itself, uh, lack of a school, lack of infrastructure, becomes a challenge. So what we ask our implementing partners is to say, okay, you identified a barrier. A barrier could be infrastructure. A barrier could be uh, the school lacks resources and so on. How are you going to address each and every barrier? And I must remind you that sometimes a child can face three, four barriers uh, at any given time. So the, it, it is our partners then who design a program around a barrier, an appropriate uh, intervention that addresses the barrier, the identified and selected barriers. So in the next slide, I'm just gonna show you some of the things that our partners do. There's a lot of writing here, and I apologize for having so many, um, um, so much writing in here, but, some of our, if you just look at this quickly, some of this is, these are some of the interventions that our partners undertake. You know, if, if for schools that, um, if you look at the first box to the, to the on top, on red box in, on the left hand, uh, it says refugees and IDDs. Uh, you know, some of these kids need, they, some of our partners provide healing classrooms. They provide accelerated learning programs. They, you know, because these are children who have experienced war or, 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 um, or conflict, a lot of them need psychosocial support um, and, and, and they, they need safe places to learn and so on. Uh, the, under the infrastructure <coughs> challenge or barrier, uh, our partners build classrooms, um, they sometimes, uh, you know, they find out many, many ways to sort of address the issue, issue of lack of classrooms. And I will not go into each one of them, but just to give you a, a glimpse of what some of the, some of the things that our partners do to address, to address some of these barriers. Um, and, and this obviously would be available to you guys if you want to, if you want to look at each one of them. Um, and if you have any questions at any point, please just ask me and, and jump in. <clears throat> Particularly here, because this is sort of the critical um, piece to our work. It is, it is sort of the underlying uh, 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 model of, of ours. It's identifying the barriers but also coming up with solutions, things that are, will address these issues. And yeah, so Syed, and, uh, hello. Yes, sorry. Uh, so, uh, you know, because A, the slide is not so visible. Uh, okay. Uh, could you, uh, you know, just elaborate uh, or probably maybe read out and just talk a bit about each one so we get a better idea? Yes. I've seen a lot of uh, synergy. So, uh, you know, uh, with what you've spoken so far, in terms of what you look out for and what, what the delivery is. I, I'm sure, and you know, like you said, this is a critical stage uh, slide because it brings it all together, the crux yes. of it. So let's yes. just hear it from you since, uh, you know, it'll, it'll give us a better idea. Yes. So, as, as I said, the, the, the challenges, the challenges that children face globally, as you, as you, you, you all know, uh, Sandeep, is that, you know, it, it no two places are alike, you know, no two contexts are alike. So each and every partner who comes to us, we, 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 you know, we ask them to write, the first thing we do is ask the partner to write what we call an expression of interest. And some of the questions that we ask the partner is, you know, to tell us what, what the context looks like. And, and, you know, they may say, you know, this is a poor community, and uh, you know there are you know 
hundreds of thousands of kids or girls who don't have access to education. And then at that point, we say, why? So it's, in other words, a barrier is, is, an, is, is, is just asking a partner, why is a girl in a, in a small town in, you know, uh, in India not going to school? And you may, you, know, you may come back and say, because she has to work at home. You know, she's, uh, you know her, the, the family has three kids, they're poor, and the girl is helping the mother, uh, uh, you know, cook and clean. Or a boy in a poor, in a, in a poor community may, uh, may have to go out and, uh, and, and work. Uh, you know, what we call a child, child labor. So you may come back and say, child labor uh, or, or early marriage is a, is a barrier, it's a challenge in this particular context. Uh, and then we will say, the next question that we ask is then, so what is the solution? How do we reduce the issue of child labor in this particular reality, in this particular context. So a partner may come back and say, well, one way to, to address this issue, to give the families cash. Uh, a lot of our project, projects give what's known as conditional um, grants, cash, cash uh, grants, for example, uh, or sometimes unconditional. And what that basically means is that family would receive certain amount of money if they send a, that those children or one child or two children, whatever the family has, to school. And as long as the child shows up for school, then the grant is giving, the, the cash is giving to the family. Is a sort of a solution, one so, a very specific solution to an issue of child labor because the, 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 uh, we need to figure out a way to replace the, the potential uh, income that the, the, a child may, may generate for a family. So that's, that's sort of a, a one, one example. The, uh, we do a lot of community sensitization. When our, when, when um, a, a, a partner I, figures out and says, you know, in a particular community, the, uh, the issue of education is not seen as a priority. You know, it, it is, it's a farming community and children have to work in the farms. And so education, you know, is, is important, but might, it might not be as important as, as having children work next to their parents and or be with their parents even when when they're going for uh the times of when it rains and and, and uh, the farms need to be tended so the question then becomes then what do we do how do we sensitize and make sure that the parents know the importance of getting a boy or girl into school so there's a lot of community mobilization and community sensitization that our partners do um, we, you know, in some places, or some of our partners, when there's this, you know, extreme poverty, uh, they, 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 we start, they start what we call, you know, village savings and loans uh, type uh, schemes, if you will. Um, we ask some of our partners to do um, income generating activities when there's this extreme, extreme poverty, for example. Um, in some places like Syria, when there is a, uh, you know, um, active war in some of our partners make sure that children, even when they're at home and not attending school, continue to learn. So they may start a radio program. They may start home-based schooling type activities. Um, uh, you know, when they're after the conflict uh, stops, or when a war stops, some of our partners do renovate school renovations and in infrastructure improvements and, and so on. Uh, we noticed part in parts of, of Africa, 
a lot of the girls, will, you know, will come to school, but with, with you know, would skip school, especially uh, uh, when they reach uh, the period of uh, uh, menstruation. So we, the schools provide uh, sanitary kits and, and, and so on. Um, we also noticed that uh, school safety issues are really important. Water, for example, is becomes a, an issue in some places when schools don't have running water and wash, washing facilities. So some of our partners would say, you know, a lot of the girls do not come to school because there is no separate wash facilities or places uh, for girls. So they, they, we, build, we build those. Um, so there are myriad, there are you know, hundreds of, of ways of, of addressing each and every problem, but each and every problem has to be context specific and it has to target a particular child, a particular community, and the common, the common barriers that these communities face. I'm not sure if that's indeed, that kind of touches on and addresses some of your, uh, uh, the, the questions you were raising. Teacher training also is, is huge, huge, as I said earlier. A lot of our partners uh, would say, for example, we have, <clears throat> we work with an organization called Handicap International. I think Handicap has changed name, Humanities International now, but they work primarily with children who are uh, with special needs. So what they do, some of the things that they do is, is they, they train teachers uh, who then can work with children with special needs. They provide you know, de devices, assistive devices, and to, to have children learn and so on. So those are, those are some of the, uh, of the things that I can think of fairly quickly. One, another, uh, one last point is that a lot of our partners <clears throat> do what we call alternative learning, establish alternative learning programs. And alternative learning programs and alternative learning education is, is when a child is, uh, is not being catered uh, 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 to by the, the formal schools, for example. They set up schools uh, that would, uh, especially for the, the ones that dropped out of school who are overaged and, and they need to catch up. So they would say, will set up a program, uh, alternative learning education program for, uh, for, uh, for overaged children so that they can um, uh, go through two, three years of schooling in maybe two, uh, in two years, sort of a condensed type program um, so that they can ultimately uh, go back to the system. So uh, we so we see all sorts of solutions, all sorts of models that are, that address these barriers, and and I can you know I, I'm sure you you guys have seen multiple some of the, some of these problems, but also additional additional ones. So maybe you guys can tell me if 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 similar if similar uh, barriers appear in the in the communities that you work. Or and, and if there are other 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 challenges you face and address, you know, uh, Syed, uh, it's it's uh, I'm I'm actually very stunned because uh, uh, the way you, you know you explained it so uh, so in length and so you know graphically it was going on my mind. It it actually resonates so so uh, so beautifully or so fully with us. Mm. Uh, you know, first of all. At least I uh, and who keeps abreast with with what's happening around and you know be it the developing nations or or otherwise, mm -hmm. but uh, you know you know that uh, Syria, for instance, is a war torn area. You know uh, you know African countries there's country poverty and, and so on and so forth. But what is what has been my takeoff from the way you explained is a the issues facing us uh, in context to education is is so similar, right? It could be poverty. Uh, you mentioned out of school girls. Uh, you mentioned who are irregularly going to uh, school. Okay, in your case, it's children. In our case, it's, it's girl specific. But it, it is so uh, convergent, uh, you know, that it, it, it amazes me. Uh, or rather, it's a reconfirmation that the issues involved uh, are the same across 
the, the places. Yes. Second, and about uh, the barriers which come to education. Yes. Specifically to that. And, and uh, you know, then therefore, uh, either directly or indirectly, how they affect. Yes. So uh, it's not one off of just going and addressing and, you know, just teaching the children uh, or educating them. It's about addressing the roadblocks which come along the way. Yes. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, that's what you know. We've been focusing on, uh, and you mentioned about challenges, and uh, pretty much what you said because uh, uh, you know uh, uh, when when a poverty uh, is there, your your first immediate uh, uh, compulsion is to get food on the table, and you know, education takes a back seat, really. So uh, I, I totally, totally. I mean, I, it's it's in sync the way our our thing moves. And third is then you know giving. Once you reach the stage, uh, giving education which is in sync uh, with with education later on in life, uh, uh, you know, somewhere that also is something that we focus on. One, uh, uh, it's common across other places. You could throw light on that. The girl, at least in our country, even after in in the year 2020 in the interiors, still are. Uh, you know, when it comes to the absolute crunch or a choice, uh, the boys are given just that little more preference. In, in, is that somewhat of a reality in the other countries also? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Girls, girls are, are across, literally across the board is the challenge. So if a, if a, if a family has uh, limited resources the, and they can only send one or two kids to school, it would only be it would, the boys will always be the ones to be selected. So it is it is a huge huge problem across the board. And, and the great thing is that it, you know the, our implementers are aware of that. And so there's even though we do not focus on girls per se, our partners are aware of the fact that girls are dis disproportionately affected by these barriers and they, 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 they face more barriers than, than boys. And I agree with you, you know, ultimately the goal here is to address the root, root causes of, of the problem and saying what is it that's, you know, causing this problem and how, how can we, I mean, we might not be able to eliminate poverty, in, uh, you know, everywhere, but the, in the communities that we work with, the kids that we work, we need to be able to say, to be able to say, this is the, these are the problems these the communities are facing, and we need to be able to address them for the time we're there. Uh, the one, the other thing that I didn't mention uh, throughout is the issue of retention. So retention is a huge, huge deal for us. So you know, once we get children into school, then the question, the second. The second part is how do you keep them stay in school, you know, and it, not just the duration of a project. But how do they, how do children stay even after you leave? So retention is sort of a built-in, if you will, uh, uh, assumption here that that you are not only bringing in children to school, but you are making sure that they receive quality education, but also stay in, in school and not drop out. So the, the partner has to, has to do that throughout by tracking, by tracking each, and, each and every individual child and, and, and seeing their progress. We don't really, for us, don't you know, ask our partners to, to, you know, to make sure that Children are scoring, you know, have some certain scores in, in, in tests and, and all, but that they, they, they come to school, that they receive proper education, and that they stay in school. So these are sort of the foundations that, that we, we, we work with. Oh. I, have, I have a couple of maybe two, two more, three more uh, slides, and then I'll stop and maybe we, can even, we can discuss further. Uh, so and we can come back to, to the barriers, that the common barriers that we face and some of the solutions that we offer. And I, 
the thing that we haven't mentioned is that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic also made things even worse. You know, we thought we were making progress uh, in, 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 in many, many of the countries that we work. Unfortunately, now we're, we're going to square, you know, back to square one, if you will. And it really, really saddens us. But that is the reality. So some of, some of, this, some of the things that I'm telling you now were post, we were prior to, prior to COVID-19. You know, as soon as, 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 soon as things, uh, schools back on, then we're gonna have issues with uh, how many of the kids that we enrolled are coming back to school, I, you know? And some of the achievements we made may be lost. That we're very cognizant of the difficulties that this issue, um, this pandemic is causing. And uh, so I just wanted to throw that in also. Um, the next slide tells a little bit of some that we made July 2019. Um, we, you know, we have, we have, we have had about 73 projects uh, since we started in 2012, and I'm talking of only educated child program now. 